Now, I said that we'd be having a bit of showbiz after nine o'clock, but we've got a little bit of showbiz sparkle in the studio this morning looking through the newspapers because you will have known him or have got to know you via The Apprentice. You were quite irritating on that, <laughs> but you openly admit that. Then you've, have. you've come on Talk Radio a couple of times since. The last mm. time I interviewed you on Talk Radio, uh, I should say, by the way, it's Ryan Mark Parsons. You openly say yourself you were quite irritating on The Apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I said that to you earlier. I think... Um, <laughs> Listen, you know, they really get so much ego out of you, those producers. They know exactly what to do, uh, worming that kind of arrogance uh, when you're on the TV. And yeah, I think... Was I that did... difficult for you? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> but I get it. I did ruffle some feathers and uh, I embraced that, you know. I like, I like disrupting. Yeah, I came on here saying that if your dog dies, get over it. Stop being so soppy. I even said to you grow up you know stop being so childish i yeah i know and have you learned your lesson absolutely not oh, they on. are like my children honestly i was in i was very very lucky actually in your neck of the woods i won't say where you live but i was in your, your neck of the woods the other day and there's yeah. a very 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 tall tower where you live you'll probably know it yeah an apartment block and i was on the my friend has the apartment on i think the, the second from the top floor and i took my dogs there and I didn't let them go anywhere near even the windows. I was really? so scared. Oh, come on. Seriously. Are I you was joking? Like, oh, yeah, I didn't let them go near the that's edge, so even the windows. That's so silly. Why? Why? What's the harm in a dog being by a window? Because what if they, they broke? What if something happened? What if they went out on the balcony and decided to... Well, they probably couldn't jump over. <laughs> you wouldn't know. Put no. the dog on a leash. If you're worried about that, put the dog on a I leash. I do not you need put to... them on a lead. Honestly, they like to run and roam free. No, I think you're being a bit paranoid, to be honest with you. And you need to just stop being so soppy and sentimental around pets. They're animals. As I said last time, they're just animals. You get over it. You Come have on. no soul. No, well, it depends. I'd, I've seen reality shows. I told you this last time. I saw you with Eating and My Ex and sort of go over your relationship and talk about everything that went wrong. And you were you had a heart there. I saw it through the concrete, you know, through the coldness. There Barely. was a heart in there, Ryan Mark. Barely. Like I said to you before as well, the producers really had to get some kind of emotion from me. Well, perform a transplant. <laughs> it was a kind of ceremony ritual kind of thing to try and get some love and care out of me. But you know what? As with all of these reality shows, there's a lot of behind the scenes the viewer doesn't see. And um, yeah, I did, I did enjoy taking part in that show, but the actual experience meeting my ex... Uh, was uh, pretty awful, to be fair. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, that's the point. That's why they want you to do it on camera. I guess so. But, you know, I tried to come up with a resolution. Didn't work. And I've been to Moff, blocked him. And Oh, you blocked him? Yeah, yeah. No more No more talking You're anymore. You're brutal. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be. Are you kidding? Why would you give anyone a chance? As soon as they mess up, you block. That's That's my golden rule. How old are you? Am I allowed to ask that question? I don't even know whether you're allowed to ask that <laughs> nowadays. It's probably politically incorrect. I'm 21. 21? You're 21? 21, well, yeah. How old were you when you did The Apprentice? 12? <laughs> I look, well, a lot of people thought I looked 12. <laughs> but I was actually, I auditioned when I was 18, and just before filming, I turned 19, and I was the youngest ever Apprentice candidate. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty, uh, pretty tough. Gosh. Going. You have yeah. all of it ahead of you. You're that brutal at 21. <laughs> by the time you are 30, you'll have blocked everyone. Tough charters. I just, I hope by the end of this morning, perhaps I'll end up blocked. Who knows? <laughs> it depends blocked on how on this Twitter. goes. It depends on how it goes. Exactly. <laughs> Be careful, please. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, Ryan Mark has been looking through the newspapers for us this morning. In a moment, we will come back and we will take a look at some of the stories that have uh, wet his whistle this morning. Can we talk about the front page of The Guardian? Mm. I'm, I imagine those are never words that you quite like to hear. No, uh, I don't read The Guardian. I mean, how are you feeling about this kind of narrative around COVID coming back again? Oh, you know what? I'm so sick and tired of this chatter coming back uh, when it comes to further lockdowns and the government have done so much over the past 18 months to try and curb the surges in coronavirus cases. We've had the lockdowns. We've had the restrictions. I think now is the time to go forward, still encourage people to get vaccinated. Most people have been vaccinated. Well, at least they've had the opportunity to get vaccinated and just let people live. 
You know, I don't like these recommendations to wear masks. I don't even wear a mask anymore. Need those assurances from the government. But instead, as The Guardian have splashed, this picture of 27 ministers in the cabinet room not wearing masks. And that is completely in contradiction to their advice to the rest of us saying, well... Well, do you remember the G7 summit or the G8 summit when it was like some maskless orgy where they were all just like hanging around talking about the restrictions whilst not wearing any masks and going up and hugging each other? It's so ridiculous. It all started. Exactly. It all started with Barnard Castle. It's where it all that's, started to go wrong. That's where it, that's where it started. And even at that summit as well, you would see stupid uh, photo opportunities where they're all distance, and then as soon as the the photograph is taken, <laughs> they all rejoin oh, and start it? hugging. It's just so absurd, honestly. Chief. Buffoon in chief, Boris Johnson in the middle, maskless himself. Though I imagine that's probably because Carrie hadn't packed one in his pocket. And as we know, that's uh, uh, she's the the prime minister, isn't she? <laughs> she's another one that cares too much about dogs, isn't she? <laughs> you cannot care too much about. Don't you have a dog? Yeah, I do, but I don't. I don't care that much for it. You don't care for your dog. Well, not to the extreme that you care for your dog. I'm not sort of having a, a panic attack if the dog is near a window, for example. Uh, I care to some extent, but not to your crazy levels. And I'm well, sure yeah, the carrot I, just, I well. do love my dogs to crazy <laughs> levels. And I, I do not, I'm not upset about that. Mm. Does, is your dog allowed on, in, on your sofa, for instance? No, no. I mean, is this a family dog or one that lives with you? No, this is one that lives with me. And, and I don't let it near the furniture. The furniture is too expensive for dog hair. No, we have dog baskets. That's what they're for. But what, what if you want to cuddle with your dog? Well, they don't go near the sofa. They don't go near anything else. They go if they want. If the dog wants to cuddle with me, we go to the park, and that's where I cuddle in the fresh air. No you furniture. cuddle your dog in the park. I don't even have time to cuddle. When do you cuddle your dog? Uh, every single evening, every, when it comes to bed. I don't think my dog likes me because my dog... Never... I, I don't think your dog likes you and I've, no, I've only ever met you once. <laughs> never comes to me for a cuddle. So I, when I go to it, it sort of runs away. So I kind of leave it. Just to Who be clear, cuddles we're... this dog? Just to be clear, we're not abusing the dog. We love the dog, but I'm not as affectionate as maybe you are, it seems. But it doesn't Carrie. sound like you love the dog. No, I do love... <laughs> if the dog is listening, I do love you. Okay. But do you? Be, well, if the dog is not listening, um, but if the dog were listening, yeah. I would be feeling very offended on behalf of that dog. If the dog comes to you for affection, you turn that dog down. Well, it depends on the moment. If I have time, and if it's not in the furniture, then I will hug the dog. You know what a dog is, don't you? You have met a dog before. You I, know? I know what a dog is. Yes. Because yeah. you don't seem to like them. Very, how can you not cuddle your own dog? I said I do when the time is right. I go to the park a lot. I walk the dog every day. So when yeah. I go to the park, when I'm outside in the fresh air, I, I hug the dog. Are you socially distancing from your dog? Is that why you have to do it at the park? Is that the only reason? Why Are you applying COVID rules to you and your no, dog? No, no, no. I'm not taking it that far. <laughs> Last night, I was sat on the sofa and I was giving little Dolly a cuddle, or, you know, stroking her. Right. And then I stopped. And this is, she, she, she starts to... Oh, look, this is the issue. You've turned your dog into a diva. The yeah, Gemma, yeah, the Gemma Collins monster. of dogs. She's a complete monster. Doggy said. social service needs to get into your flat, says someone on YouTube. I couldn't agree more. Oh, stop it. People like your current guest shouldn't have a dog. I don't like him, says Michelle. <laughs> Michelle, get over it. Stop being so childish, Michelle. You won't you won't get much sympathy from him, Michelle. I can guarantee you that. Uh, we'll be back with uh, finding out whether you've got some sympathy for some of the stories in the newspapers, including Strictly Come Dancing in Crisis. Weekend Breakfast with Christo on Talk Radio. So many people. Do you know what? I've been asking about lockdowns. I've been asking about whether you'll go on holiday. I've been asking about potential crisis when it comes to the advice from Sage. But overwhelmingly, the most reaction we've had is is people worried about your dog, Ryan Mark. And uh, My dog is fine, by the I'm way. I'm glad I'm not Ryan Mark's dog, says Sarah. He shouldn't own a dog. Well, in fairness, he only just doesn't like cuddling the dog. I don't like cuddling. I don't like giving affection generally. You saw that with my ex. I don't like giving out any emotion. I'm very close, you know, very... Yeah, even to a dog. Yeah, it's even to a dog. I don't care if it's a dog or a rat. It's still an animal. It's there an is animal. There's a difference between a dog and a rat, Ryan Mark. I know the differences. One small, one slightly bigger. 
Well, yes, but also one gives you affection and one is a vermin and disease-ridden <laughs> thing that runs around a sewer, which being in The Apprentice, you should be used to. No, I'm used to a lot of rats from The Apprentice. Let's not get into that. <laughs> well, talk of that from one reality show to another because the front page of is it today's sun newspaper yeah the yeah, sun. What, are, what are they saying on that show has been plunged into crisis so this is strictly come dancing strictly come dancing yes yeah, two professional dancers have refused to get the covid jab should they be made should there be a strictly vaccine passport well i think if you're going on that show you need to get the jab you're in touch with these people very you know you know how close they get to each other they need to know that they're safe but then aren't we getting into the realms of someone needing to be vaccinated to go to work well i've said this before i don't know if you tuned into my debate on good morning britain i was saying all under 30s if they are able to have the freedoms that we currently enjoy they need to get vaccinated and it goes for these dancers as well i could not disagree more why why do you disagree with that because i don't think it's the role of government to decide whether someone has a medical procedure or not. What I would like is for people to be informed enough, for the government to have the trust enough from people so that people want to take the vaccine. Yeah, I think discussions should always take place and you should always want to discuss the but there's facts no discussion well. if you're saying you're not coming in here if you haven't got your vaccine well i want to hear their side because i don't really agree with their side and everything i've heard seems to be hysterical when i go on social media even after i've done debates the reaction from these anti-vaxxers has been so outlandish and just so extreme that i can't take these people seriously and all we're asking and it's the same with these strictly dancers you can see how now this show has been plunged into crisis just because two dancers, for some reason that isn't disclosed in the article, want, don't want to get the vaccine. That is causing issues. And we're seeing that not just in Strictly, but all over the country. How because of people's laziness or because of their scepticism or just their refusal to get the vaccine. Well, I'm largely upset because I thought it was a great move to get people vaccinated, especially young people, because they feel they, well, they have this immunity, this superpower, not realising that they can actually spread the virus to those who are vulnerable and getting and putting that message out there to get young people vaccinated because they all oh, they might not be able to go to the nightclub was a great thing and they should have stuck to their guns and not made a massive u-turn on that decision you know that you can still contract covid and potentially spread it to other people in a nightclub if you've had the vaccine yes but when you've had the vaccine it reduces the likelihood for you to go to hospital I the actual, I, I the actual that, symptoms of the coronavirus. The job of government, the job of government, is to inform people. The job of government is to have, is to give people faith in the science and the medicine. This is how conspiracy theories emerge. Well, they're not, they're where not people helping feel, matters. Where people feel that there's something sinister going on and there's some kind of tracking device within the vaccine. It's not about that. It's about well, protecting no, but I people, but no, but I think you're saving lives, and that's what it's about. No, I'm not having that, because what you're doing is you're undermining people who have genuine concerns about the size of government, and you are banding them all in as anti-vaxxers or think they're being tracked I have those concerns, yet I've taken the vaccine. You can still be concerned about government overreaching and increasing their role to a place where they shouldn't, whilst still having had the vaccine. And for you to sort of bundle those people in as anti-vaxxers or as people who think there's a microchip in the vaccine <laughs> is ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. It I is. find I find what I find ridiculous, to be honest with you, is why people have so many objections to getting the vaccine. It's very easy to book it on the NHS website. All you need to do is to go on the website, book a vaccine, and then you're protected and you protect others. I don't understand why people are objecting to getting the jab. It's very simple and it does so much rather than being berated and being told that they're irresponsible well fair enough if people don't believe in ministers if they feel boris johnson etc are being disingenuous that's fine but as you have said you need to trust the scientists and the scientists like professor witty are encouraging people to get the vaccine so fine don't believe boris but believe in professor witty and the likes of these experts who are encouraging people up and down the country to get vaccinated and on that basis i can't see why anyone would possibly disagree uh, with these epidemiologists and these experts who are asking people to just get jabbed it's not that difficult people you 
have really set the cat among the pigeons this morning and we'll get to why that is about your vaccine passport views in just a moment and of course it ties into what we're discussing this morning here on weekend breakfast front page of uh, this morning's guardian saying that apparently uh, ministers are not listening to scientists do you trust the government when it comes to this coming up this hour we'll talk more about this the travel restrictions being lifted does it make it worthwhile to go abroad is it offensive to use the term love that is something that we will discuss this hour as well and when i say love not i love you it's uh you know oh really nice to have you here ryan mark love yeah darling apparently not apparently not allowed to use those terms anymore last night when i spoke about this on drive it went crazy the clip views that we've had have been unbelievable the number of comments we've got on twitter about this so uh, we might uh, revisit that this morning weekend breakfast with christo on talk radio uh, so many texts and tweets directed at you ryan mark love it uh so um where do I start? Where do I even start? Is it that bad? Uh, <laughs> it's quite bad. Uh, stop having guests who spread misinformation and fake news. Thank you for that one. Um, I always find it amusing when people refuse the vaccine for various reasons on safety, but will happily pour alcohol, a known, po- known poison down their throats. Mm. It's an interesting view, Paul. I've never actually heard that one. Does your neurotic... Guest, your COVID neurotic. Neurotic. <laughs> Understand oh my risk. As an unvaxxed 50 year old, Witty's charts told me I have a 0.05% of being hospitalized with COVID and a 0.02% risk of death. But no scientist can tell me my long term or immediate risk from the jab. I just can't get my head around why people just don't get the jab. If they are not at risk to the virus, because they're worried. Worried about what? Worried about side effects, worried about the fact that it has been. Um, in their mind, I mean, I think that it has been fast track tested in as much as you've never had so many people working on a single vaccine. I think people need to understand, OK, fine, you don't trust Boris, but trust the scientists, trust the experts who are urging people up and down the country to get the vaccine. That's who we should be listening to. That's who I listen to. I don't listen to Boris. The same with you. I don't really like Boris. Usually I would be totally against government intervening telling us what we can and can't do the less government the better that's always been my viewpoint but this crisis is so unique this virus is deadly okay it has ruined the lives of thousands of people in this country so when it comes to dealing with the virus i want people to get vaccinated i want the government to motivate people to get vaccinated and sometimes that might have to be tough and telling people well listen you can't go to the pub if you don't get your jab ridiculous the government has no right to tell someone they can't go to the pub because they've not had if it's a a public space if it's a public space it's not if it's enclosed and it's around people who don't feel safe it has the right to tell people to get the jab in order to protect others that might be vulnerable i I don't understand why people don't agree with me. I'm sure there are listeners who are nodding their heads right now. Nick has sent me a tweet saying, look, I agree with Ryan Mark. Follow the science uh, and Chris Whitty and just get jabbed. Uh, Christo Radio, that's me, using the people need to be educated argument, but some never will be. Um, Thank you for that, Nick. And Boris Johnson is vaccinating 12 to 15 year olds and giving them the option to be vaccinated without parental permission so that somewhat makes the following the science argument fall apart doesn't it well when it comes to boris and his decision making i really don't trust anything he says and i think the sooner we get rid of him the better because as we've seen in the guardian as well you have these ministers preaching because i don't like masks yet you have a group of ministers nearly 30 of them sitting around a table in the cabinet room without a mask Yet they're telling us to wear a mask Should if we're inside a room. Should 12 to 15-year-olds be jabbed? I think when it comes to 12 to 15-year-olds, the parents should have the ultimate decision. It should always be down to parental consent. I think they're really taking the wrong stance when it comes to this particular age group and those at school where there were real concerns that when students return to school in September, there would be a surge in coronavirus cases. But we have seen that contained. So when it comes to schools, I take a a totally different stance. And when it comes to parental consent, I also take a different stance. But when it comes to adults, we're talking about those 18 and above, they have their own power and free will to decide 
without asking their parents to so the get the jab. So the government is wrong to give that free will to under 15, uh, 16 year olds. Yeah. You think? Yeah, I, I agree. The tribunal that ruled that calling women at work love or hun or chick or anything like that is not the same as using the word lad or mate. Um, so if you call someone, hello mate, that is very different to saying hello love or hello babe because one is sexist and one isn't. In fact, my partner, I never used to use the word babe till I met the love of my life. Uh, it's not you, Ryan, Mark, I'm oh, afraid. Ryan, that's so disappointing. It is. <laughs> Put some effort into that. That's that very only... disappointing. Thank you. That's very disappointing. Um, and, uh, t- <laughs> and sorry, I just saw a text for you. It's so funny. Can I just read oh, this tell me, yeah. before I talk about this? <laughs> Please stop this communist <laughs> pretending to be a conservative talking nonsense. You communist. are supporting Boris Jonsky. Oh, gosh. You I'm are... not a communist. Please. You're who acting said this? like a communist. Who said this? Let me hear. Let me yeah, hear that. Gordon. Name. Gordon. Right. OK. No, Gordon. I'm not a communist. Oh, you're acting like a communist. Just on this issue, <laughs> I have a slightly, a slightly different <laughs> point of view. Anyway, back to the uh, uh, the story we're talking about. So, uh, right, Mark, is it wrong to use the term love or hun? Because, like I said, I, I don't think for the first year I used my partner's name. I just called him Babe. I call him Babe all the time. Would you object? Do you ever use the term, hello, love? Hi, love. How are you no, doing, Babe? I don't really say hello, love. It's a bit sort of East Ender for me. It's but um, common. But I would say, you know, hello, darling. You know, hello, darling, enchanté, darling. Uh, how you do, darling? Oh, yeah, I could tell you that you would use that. Yes. Yeah, and I can't see how that's offensive. Anyone, let me tell you, anyone who finds love or hun offensive needs to uh, wake up. It needs to stop being so soppy. I mean, that is just pathetic in every <laughs> stretch of the imagination. If you find... Is it appropriate at work? Yes, of course it's appropriate at work. I've had many people call me love and hun at work. Would I turn around and say to them, how dare you call me love? No, because I have a backbone. I have a spine. A, a gay joke, for instance, which I'm fully entitled to do, people will say, they won't look at the intent of the joke. Mm. They won't look at who's the bu- who is the butt of the joke. Yeah, they They'll don't... just simply say it's a gay joke. You have yeah, to ban it. Yeah. See what I mean? They don't look at the context, and I agree with that. I feel people need to get over certain words and like you said not just look at what is actually being discussed the subject whether it's love mate honey whatever it is and uh, assess the intent assess the context but i don't even see any harm in being passive aggressive i love arguing with people i love having a, a heated discussion with well, a colleague we had them this morning exactly we're not you know we're not falling out we're we're it's healthy it's exactly. i will it's I fun. promise i will only slug you off behind your back well i can imagine that. <laughs> I <laughs> i'm promise, gonna walk I out of the studio never do it to your face but no yeah. and i think that that's a real problem you know a lot of women and men themselves want to be scooped up and loved by this masculine amazing man who is you know gritty and rugged and oh, just give me a minute oh, hot and flustered. <laughs> you're looking then, a bit sweaty <laughs> i'm a bit flustered but then on the flip side yeah no we yeah. want you to have feelings we want you to cry we want you to sob we want you to do this we want you to do that yeah and i really think that it's it's tough to be a man nowadays. it is it's so ambiguous i mean what you just said really makes it tough for men whether they can pull the chair out and or open the door for a woman I, i'm sure i've heard many stories i have heard many stories where a man has opened the door for a woman and then he's accused of being sexist i mean that's just utterly ridiculous you say lady or you say gentleman yeah because that's how you address yeah. someone that is how you describe someone but that's not allowed anymore it's polite form and people are forgetting the etiquettes and traditions and the rest of it it is about being polite and instead they're focusing and worrying about this endless this perpetual list of things we can and can't say and i'm done with it i don't actually care to be honest with you what anyone thinks about what i say in terms of if i call someone darling and they have an issue with it i don't i don't care they need to get over it i don't really well, care if intent. i offend someone no but even if i'm intending to be passive aggressive or patronizing i don't care if I'm in that mood and I want to be passive aggressive, what you know? They well, need then to... when is, well, is where is that then sexism? Sorry. When is that sexist then? It's not sexist. I would if never say calling someone, someone darling is sexist. No way. Well, I think that it could be perceived as sexist if your intent is to be 
Sexist. If your intent is to be <laughs> sexist, then it's going to be sexist. But I generically call anyone darling, whether you're a man or a woman or whatever you are, I, I just call anyone darling. So yeah. for someone to uh, misconstrue it and call me sexist without actually knowing my intent is just totally not. Well, it's sexist wrong. towards you because it's making gross generalisation that men are all sexist. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's so is. hypocritical. Yeah, exactly. Now, I've called them Carpet Carlisle. I've called them Lionel Lester. Uh, I've called them all these sorts of things because I think Insulate Britain is probably the most dull name yeah. for any kind of environmental group. But before we get to that, there was an interesting story from yesterday I just wanted to explore from you. Um, that is that one of the stars of Gogglebox, I don't know if you saw this, mm. Paige DeVille, she's quit the show after accusing the bosses of providing zero aftercare support mm. obviously you were in a really high profile reality show we've seen the tragic deaths around love island as well obviously the reason people watch these shows are for robust characters who are going to have real personalities you being one of them but of course what makes good television then leaves those contestants vulnerable afterwards to being completely trolled in order to be memorable you probably have to have strong opinions yeah. and then therefore people will troll you afterwards so to what extent have you experienced that and to what extent were you offered support after the apprentice well right from the beginning during the auditions uh one of the final stages of the auditions we had a meeting with a psychiatrist and that was for about an hour and believe me the questions she was asking were very um direct so and what, what kinds of questions are you asked oh, like everything like what did, what was your family like what's your mother like what's your father like uh what was it like growing up like it's sort of intrinsic details about my childhood uh, so it was starting right from the beginning like when i was young uh to how, how old i was on the show which i was around 18 19 so it was going and to they ask about detail. how you would cope if people are going to send you abuse or send you horrible messages and things like that. Yeah, so the BBC and uh, the production company Fremantle were very good in terms of providing that uh, service where they would give us media training so we would be able to cope with the intense social media attention because I would find every Wednesday when The Apprentice was on, I could be trending number one sometimes. And when you're trending on Twitter at number one, uh, it's thousands of tweets, thousands of people that, tweeting about you. So you have to be prepared for that. Because the thing is, the, the problem that you face doing one of those shows is that you want to be notorious. Mm. You want to presumably do it to have a career in the media afterwards. But the way you do that is to be talked about and potentially hated. Yeah. And so, I mean, did that ever affect you? Never you affect. No. Get sad about it. Never. I think before I made a decision to even apply for The Apprentice in the first place, I've always had a thick skin. And I would recommend anyone listening to this now, if you want to apply for a reality TV show, you need to know yourself that you are tough enough for that kind of uh, media attention, whether you're on the TV and whatever happens after in the news. So before going on the show, I knew I could deal with it. And I did deal with it. I was trolled and you know called all kinds of names under the sun fat pig and all, i'm not even going to go into it but uh it was really quite uh malicious but it just bounced off me i've always said i have skin as thick as a rhino and you really do need to have really uh, a sort of tough exterior to go on a show like that it's 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 tough and what what about responding to people because i reply mm. to my trolls quite a lot yeah. and i argue with them quite a lot and you know and, and I, I've so, sometimes I've had to pull back from it because I'm like what is the point of arguing with a stranger you know my partner will be like oh you know try to have a nice conversation I'm like hang on <laughs> just arguing with a total stranger on Twitter <laughs> and, and yeah. you sort of have to sort of check yourself sort of going who am I actually arguing with Exactly. I mean, I love it as well. I love yes, it. So do I. <laughs> it's so satisfying. I don't know. I find it like a therapeutic when you have some, I don't know, some blob in his mother's dungeon tweeting at you uh, so about an issue that you're talking about on the radio or TV. And you do have to feel sorry for them. You know, they haven't got much going on. And when they see you on TV, it's exciting and they want to try and reach you. And, that, and we're not talking about the people, by the way, that you debate with, because I love debate on Twitter. And I yes. Really, I mean, we're talking about people who are just being trolls. Yeah, exactly. The people who are just purely nasty. So you'll probably end up debating with some people after this about your whole vaccine stuff. And yeah. I'm, I'm sure that you'll be happy to do so. Yeah, I have questioned why am I spending hours responding to these people I don't know without a profile picture. They have some egg profile picture on Twitter. I'm thinking I'm arguing with an egg. 
you know what what's going <laughs> what's going on here but it is so satisfying when they use the wrong your and you correct them and uh you just prove how stupid they are uh by the way a couple of um uh, tweets by the way how sad i say thanks honey this is on the subject of uh hun and love being offensive apparently male or female who's helped me deliver a package commenting on the cuteness of my dog i've never had anyone challenge it i think this sensitivity is a learned response thank you very much indeed uh, for that one a couple of others here as well um oh, i'm loving mark says jacqueline and who are these morons a load of frustrated women no doubt um, give me a traditional old-fashioned man that treats me like a lady any day yes. uh, the day my man starts treating me like his mate he can go a um, few others as well here just very briefly though before we get to those um, you just want to find a word about insulate britain don't you yeah, they're just so, oh, I don't know. They really get on my grill. They're so sanctimonious, aren't they? They're just so self-righteous and they feel they're so, they're so amazing and they're doing good things for the planet. I mean, I just want to say to them, get over yourself. You're not that important and just stop disturbing people's day. Don't park yourself in the road and stop the traffic. You are, oh, it's so they get on my nerves. It's so counterproductive. It annoys me is because uh, the whole point is, look, we want you to insulate your homes. We want to save you money. Mm. Well done, you. But then we're going to stop you going to work, which will make you have no money. Um, yeah. th that's the thing. It's like when Extinction Rebellion says we were really worried about climate change and pollution. So we're going to close all the roads so that you're stuck in traffic causing pollution. Exactly. We're going to glue ourselves to a train because we want you to take trains. It, it doesn't make any sense. I think it just boils down to the fact that these people are lacking brain cells. I mean, they're not mm -hmm. doing things that are sort of achieving their goals. Too many yeah. diesel fumes, perhaps. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's getting to their heads. <laughs> uh, Ryan oh. Mark Parsons. I'm going to call you from now on. Do you know oh. that? Columnist, commentator, apprentice star. You've been loved and loathed on Twitter this morning. That's how I like it. Taken it all in very, very good grace. Will you, uh, uh, dare I ask, will you come back again? I'd love to come back. I want to see you in your speedos next time, getting ready <laughs> for your holiday. <laughs> uh, I think we'll uh, lose quite a few viewers.